Okay, so we are back from our second pandemic adventure. We just got back into Canada two days ago, and I've been having a ton of questions regarding our travel. How was it leaving Canada? How was it moving around the EU? What about the various countries that we visited? What were the rules and regulations? Uh, countless DMs on this I've answered in the last couple of days, so I figured it would just be easier if I did a video summary that goes through all of the stuff uh, that I wanted to, to touch on. So we left and uh, like I said, this is our actually second pandemic adventure. So if we back up a little bit, we escaped Canada back in October of 2020, right in kind of the, the thick of things, just prior to that shutdown that happened again in the middle of November. So that was when we went to Dubai and the Maldives. This was you know, pre-vaccine, PCR testing was just getting going. And that's when we left Canada, got the PCR test done in Germany with a seven hour turnaround so that we could actually go to the Maldives and then Dubai. So a lot's obviously changed since then. We just recently went to France, Spain, and Italy. And so I wanna break down country by country what it was like flying from Canada and moving through those three countries over the last month. So we ended up leaving Canada. This was July 18th, so around a month ago. And we arrived, first stop was Germany. Now. We needed a negative test in order to get on this flight from Canada to Germany. Most flights, if you're leaving from Canada right now, require a PCR test. It does not matter what your vaccine status is. If you're flying abroad, you need a PCR test. So we arranged this through Life Labs, and the program's called Fly Clear. So we booked a time at a local pharmacy for the Friday night prior to us leaving on Sunday the 18th. We got our swab, they sent the sample to the lab. We had the test results back as of the Saturday, 1 p.m. So it was a 15 to 16 hour turnaround, way better than it was in the fall. The reason in the fall why we went to Germany to get tested was one, you didn't need a PCR test to leave Canada, and two, the turnaround times on the PCR test back then were three to six days, which doesn't really work if you need a 72 hour negative. So they have sped up considerably. Now there's lots of programs you can use for this. We used FlyClear with Life Labs. It was $200. Test results back in 15 to 16 hours. It was perfect. Got us into the EU and into the south of France, which was our first stop. Now there are a lot of other programs you could use, testing facilities popping up every day. I know there's one or two at the airport. There's CVM Medical. Um, there's one in Kitsilano and then my brother just recently went to Seattle and back and they used uh, a private lab out of Coquitlam So many options just do a bit of research poke around and you can find ease of access to a PCR test But they're all running about two to three hundred dollars depending where you go So we get on the flight. We're over to Germany. That was our first stop So we did hit a passport control and borderline at that airport So this is our first time entering the EU all he wanted to see was our PCR test, where were we going? So we presented the PCR test, said we were going to France for a week or so. He barely looked at the PCR test. It was, it was very, very quick. We had a printout. He checked uh, names, dates, cross-referenced it with our passport, and then we were in. And from that day forward, we were in the EU and the Shenzhen area, which is a collection of 40 plus countries that make travel a breeze. They're all friendly countries. And when you move from country to country, once you're in, it's a lot easier. For example, we then hopped on the flight to Germany um, and went to the south of France was our first stop. So we went Germany to Nice. We arrived at the Nice airport and what do you know? We didn't have to do passport control. There was no border guards to talk with. We didn't ask any questions. There was no interrogation. We didn't have to say anything because once we checked in in Germany, we were in. And I should touch on the busyness of the airport. So if I back up a little bit, Vancouver YVR when we arrived to leave, pretty much a ghost town there still. I mean, way under capacity. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many flights are leaving each day, but compared to all the European ones we've been to and the American ones that we've heard people go through, YVR was totally dead. It was a ghost town. Uh, so getting through security, it's all amalgamated into one security. Normally we would enter for the international wing and terminal, uh, have a separate security check there, whereas we kind of all got funneled into one security area, cleared that, and then went to your, your various terminals to board. But very quick, easy, smooth. It's, it's dead going to YVR right now. Um, very quiet and easy. Germany, much busier. It's a main hub, right, that connects 
uh, Europe to North America. There's tons of flights going through there. Uh, when we came home from Germany, there was like, you know, I think there was 42 flights in 75 minutes out of Frankfurt that I could see on this one board. So just, just craziness, right? Like a flight every one to three minutes out of there. A happening place, not the case with YBR. So we arrived uh, from Germany to Nice. That was our first stop in the South of France. Again, no passport control, no questions. We were in. And then we spent six days in France. Now there were minimal restrictions. Social distancing was kind of not really happening. I mean, the first restaurant we got uh, seated in, we were at least a you know, foot or two <laughs> from the person beside us. Uh, masking here and there, not really enforced. What's interesting about France, though, is the week before we got there, the president announced that they wanted to move to a green pass, uh, vaccine passport for entry to bars and restaurants. So there was a ton of rioting and protesting going on in France, in the major cities, probably, you know, Paris and the like. Uh, so we didn't feel or see or experience any of that in the south of France, but it was kind of actively going on in the background because this was supposed to go live as of August 1st. Now we're arriving in France July 19th still before any of that's um, going to be put into place there's a little bit of uproar happening in the country but generally speaking things were smooth and chill and we trained up and down the french riviera we went to all the towns um you know we shopped we ate food there was really no issue getting in was easy moving a boat was easy renting a car was easy we went to the interior of france for a day to the lavender fields, no problem at all with any of this. And quite frankly, like it was the nicest surprise because we originally were gonna go to Malta, <clears throat> but because as Canadians, we don't really have a way to load our information into their tracking system, their passenger locator forms to generate a QR code, getting into Malta right now is pretty tricky. So we swapped it for the South of France last minute and man, it was a pleasant surprise. It blew my mind, beautiful, beautiful place. Um, really had a great time, we'll definitely go back. So. That was France. We spent five nights in the south, and then we did one night in Toulouse, which is a one-hour plane right now, again, because we were flying within the same country. No testing required. We booked the flight last minute, got to the airport. Boom, next uh, hour we were in Toulouse. We did a soccer game there. A good friend of mine has part ownership in a team there locally, and so um, he said, come on over, and we said, sure. So you either had to be double vaccinated or negative test in order to get into this game. Uh, we had a great time in the presidential suite, got to watch some competitive soccer, and then um, spent one night there. We then the next morning woke up and said, where should we go now? And we had been considering Spain and had it on our radar uh, when we arrived in France. And we started looking into, okay, what do the flights look like? What are the trains, uh, et cetera? Uh, booked a last minute flight and then obviously realized that we needed a PCR test, or sorry, um, a rapid antigen test, not a PCR test. The cool thing with Europe right now is, is you don't really need a PCR test to go to too many places. So if you wanna change countries, especially if you're already in the Shenzhen area states, uh, you just grab a rapid antigen test. They are all over the place. You can go to any pharmacy, uh, especially we noticed this in France, tons of pharmacies that were offering it. You didn't need an appointment, you'd just show up, they take a sample, they test you, and then you'd have the results in 15 minutes. Boom, you wanna get on a train to another country or grab a flight, super easy. So we got a cheap flight from Toulouse over to um, Mallorca, Spain, and we had our rapid antigen test done that same morning at the airport. Test results, I started the timer. We got called back up right at the 15 minute mark, two negative tests, and then we had a flight a few hours later. Boom, it was that easy. Checked in, and when we checked in, the person did require us to show the negative um, rapid antigen test. Checked our bags uh, over to the lounge, and then hour later, we arrived in Spain. Now, each country's different. You have to look into these PLFs. They're called passenger locator forms. And what they are is a way to enter all your critical information so it generates you a QR code that they can scan on arrival. So for Spain, you know, five, six pages online, you fill it all out, and then it generates you to your email a QR code because when we arrived in Spain, again, there was no passport control, no borderline to talk to anyone, and we didn't get interrogated or questioned, but you had to have this QR code plus your negative test and that's what you would scan and show, and then boom, it, it was like herding cattle. There must have been five to 6,000 passengers arriving at this airport in Spain, uh, Palma, Mallorca, within an hour. It was chaos in there. Like, 
you were looking around going, where's the pandemic? Like, where's the COVID? 6,000 passengers, I estimated. Just herds of people. But boom, that was a really dialed in system because there was just a place to scan the QR code from your phone and you were through. You go to the baggage claim, you grab a taxi and you're at the hotel before you know it. Kind of ridiculous. We were preparing in our mind for a lot more. We thought we'd get grilled a bit more in Germany. We thought people would demand more documentation and justification for our travels. And each time we moved countries, it was like, that's it? That's all we had to do? Well, that seemed really easy. Considering what we've been researching and seeing you know, on the mainstream media, which by the way, don't believe everything you see on TV, um, had us thinking otherwise. And then Jesus, we go through this and go, wow, that was pretty easy. So here we are in Spain. We spent five nights in Mallorca. Again, you had to wear masks going inside to a restaurant before you sat down. But once you sat down, you could take it off. If you needed to go to the corner store, you had to have one on. Generally, in most hotels, in the lobbies, they wanted you to wear them. That was the worst of it, though, because other than that, you kind of went where you want and did what you want. There was no issue sitting inside or outside, going to the beach, going to the CrossFit gyms. It, it was it was all pretty much free flow and people were back to living, which was a real breath of fresh air, honestly. It was uh, probably one of the nicest parts of the trip, just to get back living and doing what we want to do without having to always think twice about everything. So that was really cool. Five days there, we caught a ferry over to um, Ibiza. Now that is obviously just another island in Spain, so we didn't need a negative test or anything. Bought a ferry fare and then boom, we were on. Three hours later, we're in Ibiza. Again, renting a car was there a little more tricky. They wanted um, an international driver's permit in one place, which I didn't have. Uh, so we went back to the same car rental company we used in France and they were totally fine. As long as you had your passport, and valid driver's license, boom, here's your car, have fun. And so we're driving around Ibiza, uh, stayed one night on our own and then four nights with Amber's cousin right in the, the middle of the island. It was beautiful. And much like Mallorca, beautiful beaches, restaurants, we went to a live show. Yeah, okay, masks here and there a little bit. Uh, didn't have to really show a proof of vaccination or negative test to do anything. You, you could go wherever you want. We did uh, flamenco guitar and dancing one night, uh, a live music show known as Leo and Other. We went to whatever beach we wanted, rented a car, no problem. And we were just back to living and enjoying um, you know, all the culture, the food beautiful weather and just the, the experience. So really good breath of fresh air. Then we figured, okay, we wanted to see Amber's friend in um, Spain, the mainland. So then we wrapped up in Ibiza. That was about five nights there and then moved over to Valencia. Again, took a one hour flight, did not need a negative test. We weren't changing countries, booked that last minute, showed up on the flight, off the flight. Landed in Valencia, and then we spent uh, a couple nights there just going up and down the coast to Alicante uh, and just exploring that, rented a car. A lot more people wearing masks, I noticed, in Spain mainland, and I asked, was there a rule change in the last couple days? Because Spain was operating on a curfew, so when we were on the islands, typically they're known for partying, there was a curfew between 1 and 6 a.m., which means there wasn't a lot of like dancing and disco and DJ happening. Um, which is what those islands are known for. So yeah, it, it was not too crazy at all. Um, but then we got to the mainland and we're like, was there a rule change? Because everybody was wearing masks on the sidewalk, outside, inside, everywhere. And so we asked and they said they're just a little more uptight in the big cities in the mainland and people were just overall a little more scared. So that there was just way more masks. Uh, but that said, you could be walking outside on the sidewalk without one on the inside in the hotels, going to your table inside restaurants. Yeah, they were a little more. Um, you know, uh, in, into checking you for masks at that point. Now, there was a few regions in northern Spain at this time that were operating on the QR code basis, which means you needed something scannable in order to go to a restaurant or bar. Now, I know this was in the north part of the country. This was not where we were, but you could see it starting to happen. So I can imagine if we spent another month or two in Spain that some of the areas we were in uh, would probably have instituted this. And with the mention of what happened... Um, you know, in, in France, with there was some protesting and riots going on right when we got there, uh, and that the president wanted to roll out this QR code system for uh, entering venues, sporting events, restaurants, etc. That that was already starting to happen in Spain as well in the northern areas, but that wasn't where we were, so it didn't directly affect us. But again, if we had stayed there longer, probably would have started to happen. 
Then the next step, once we wrapped up in Spain, we did, I think, a total of you know, 10 or 11 days there. Uh, we decided to go to northern Italy. So we looked up a flight to Milan, found a nice cheap last minute one there. But because, again, we're changing countries, now we needed the rapid antigen test again. And this is the magic of staying with Marriott. And that's why we're such Marriott fans. Because one, when you check in for the duration of your stay, you can text message directly to the front desk, any question, problem, and they get back to you within minutes. And this is pretty powerful when you're in places where you don't know the lay of the land, you don't speak the language, but you can always rely on the front desk to help you out with stuff. The concierge is just wonderful. Can't say enough about them. So it's pretty simple. You text them and say, hey, we are going to be traveling to another country. We need a rapid antigen test. They actually arrange a nurse to come to the hotels, take the swab in your room, and then for a rapid, you can have the results on the spot. And then for the PCR, they take it to the lab, and then you'll get the results the next day. So this is a wonderful service that I highly recommend people take advantage of. So that's what we did. We arranged a nurse to come to the hotel. Um, in, in, um, where were we? Was it uh, either Valencia or Alicante? And then we had a negative test so we could fly the next day to Milan. Now this is where things started to get a little interesting and a little more restrictive because we arrived in Italy. And remember Spain and Italy were two of the worst hit countries last year. Um, very interesting. Now that I think about that, I think of what we saw and what we did with no real restriction. Other than when we got to Italy, a little of this started to pop up. So we're in Milan. Uh, again, a lot, a lot of masking inside. Uh, if you're sitting outside on the patio, no problem at all. Yet we then do a day trip to Como Lake. So when you're on the ferry, yes. When you're on the train, yes, you're supposed to wear a mask. Once you're in the main little towns we were putting around in, no problem. And then we get to Como and the patio was full of this one restaurant and we had had a long day and we were hot and just wanted water and food and inside looked actually okay at that point because we'd spent a lot of times on patios and we go to sit down and then the restaurant owner waiter says i need to scan your green pass and then we say well as canadians we, we don't have one you know we have vaccination info but we don't have a green pass because if you're not an EU at this time of this video if you're not a EU passport holder you don't really have a way to load this information into the system so it's like well yes we have the info we don't know how to load it into a green pass for you to scan our QR code so he said unfortunately you can't sit inside you have to sit outside if there's no tables available you're just gonna have to wait and that was when we really started to notice okay there's a little more restrictions here right now and this green pass thing is getting rolled out as we speak and, and probably fully in effect from what I could tell because all the other Europeans have it. Um, Amber's colleague working in Spain showed us his and it's a QR code with all your you know personal medical info that you can show because what's happening is in Italy it's needed to enter inside of a restaurant for museums and then other inside venues, sporting events, that kind of stuff uh, which was similar to what we saw starting in France like with the soccer game you had to have either a QR code to scan for double vax or a negative test. So this is where we really started to notice it, that it was getting rolled out in Italy. Now that said, okay, we missed a few museums in Venice. There was two huge lines to some really cool stuff that once you get to the front, you had to scan this code, which we didn't have. So we had to just forego that, unfortunately. But lots of cool times, obviously, boating around the canals, walking through the city. Like, really, it was small issue and minor inconvenience because we literally did exactly what we wanted to otherwise on this trip. No questions asked. So that was the start of, I think, what's happening. Now we wrapped up our trip. Uh, this is where it got a little more dicey too. So again, we arranged the PCR test because we're flying now back to Vancouver. The nurse comes three times a week to the hotel. So we did it on Tuesday morning, collected our samples, and she said, you'll get an email tomorrow by about 1 p.m., no later than six. Fast forward the next day, Amber gets her results at like one o'clock on the dot. We wait a couple hours and I said, hey, I still don't have mine. Maybe just email them and say, hey, um, just looking uh, for my husband's results. Maybe you got the email mixed up. Here's his information. And that's when um, they essentially just lost mine in the shuffle for what seemed like a few hours. So we were freaking out a little bit going like, well, we need this for the morning. We have a test um, completed. We have a flight that we need to get to. Like, th this is crazy. Like, where's the actual test results? And this was another good way. Um, and good reason to stay with Marriott's because we just text the front desk and said, hey, if they don't have it, can you help us? Call the lab, we, we don't speak Italian. You're getting these emails and languages you don't understand. And so it was really good to have them just call the lab and say, hey, um, one of our 
one of our members has her results back, the, the other doesn't, what's going on here? And, and they eventually ironed it out for us and um, they sent my results along and, and we were good to go because you need that PCR test to get back to Canada. As of right now, they're not accepting a rapid antigen in order to come back in and don't ask me why. It's just crazy because you look at how all the countries in the EU are just moving and flowing and rapid antigen and you want to go here the next day and hop on this ferry and hop on this train. It's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> I don't want to say it's dead easy, but it's pretty easy compared to the hoops we seem to be jumping through as Canadians. And so we got the negative PCR test, uh, take a boat ride over to the airport, which was really cool, by the way. They drive you right up to the terminal in a boat. <laughs> and we left our uh, hotel in, in a boat. It was, it was a crazy water taxi experience, so I recommend everyone try it. So that was um, that. We got to the Venice airport, over to Germany. There we had to clear passport control because that was our exit of the EU, right? So that was the only other time we got a stamp. We got a stamp entering Germany. Then we went to France, Spain, and Italy. No passport control. Go back to Germany. Now we're getting on a flight at a gate, and they put passport control in between because you're leaving the EU. Uh, stamp a passport, and we were on our way home. Got back to Canada. Again, a ghost town. I'm looking at 45 flights in 75 minutes leaving Germany, and then I get back to Canada, and I'm like, there's like four or five internationals, maybe five or 10 coming from the States and the rest of Canada, just, just a ghost town. Very, very small line uh, at the, um, the customs and passport control. We get up to the front, uh, we show the PCR test, we show vaccine status, and as of July 5th, that means you are exempt from quarantine, which is really cool. So July 5th, they announced that if you're double vaxxed and you're coming home from abroad, you do not have to quarantine anymore. They also, as of August 9th, dumped the additional test because you already come home with a negative test plus vaccine status they had previously had you do another test at the airport that's since been wiped out and moved to by random selection only and they didn't randomly select us so as soon as we cleared that we grabbed our bags passed the slip to um, the guard on the way out and we were out of the airport totally free exempt from quarantine so that was really cool there's two lines they funnel you into though is the um, the a line are the ones that got, I think, randomly selected for another test at the airport, and then the B line, you're just out. So, pretty easy coming back into Canada. Um, now, that said, as of July 5th, if you have zero or one dose, you still have to do a 14 day quarantine. There's just no way around it right now unless there's double vaccine status. And yeah, uh, who knows when that'll change. I think they're trying to work in some rapid antigen, but it's still PCR or bust. They just announced today that they're trying to, I think as of the start of September and by October, it's gonna be firm that to take any domestic flight in Canada, you're also gonna to need to uh, show vaccine status. So they're clamping down extremely hard because we didn't have to show any of that to do any of the EU movement. It was just grab a rapid antigen, go. Grab another rapid antigen, go. Very easy. Whereas now just to come back home, we need a negative PCR test. To leave, we need a negative PCR test. And if you're not double vaxxed, it's still a 14 day quarantine. Um, so yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. This is gonna apply to domestic flights as well too. So even going back and forth to Toronto, this is about to get crazy. So yeah, that's just a quick, quick and dirty, not necessarily so quick, that was almost 24 minutes, of how we went as Canadian residents through Germany, south of France, Spain, and over to Italy. Pretty effortless, I must say. I, I hope I portrayed that on a lot of the stories I was showing uh, through our travels that people are back living they're doing whatever they were doing before all this and, and I can't stress that enough yeah there's a few little hoops to jump through a few extra rules definitely more money right you got a budget for these tests right I think collectively we spent about a thousand bucks just doing PCR and rapid antigen tests just to get there and back so you know if it's a family of four a lot more hoops to jump through a lot more money what if someone gets a negative test? Yeah, I know there's always a big what if, but you know, if you're doing the right things, taking precautions, looking after your health, um, you just gotta leave the rest up to uh, the forces above because we gotta get back to living. I can't uh, tell you how good it felt to sneak away for 25 days and just a breath of fresh air, um, the culture, the food, the experience, the weather uh, was really recharging and just reminded you uh, what life was not like without traveling to finally have it back how damn good that feels so yeah i hope that gives some insight on what it's like as a canadian trying to navigate through pandemic travel and i hope that answers most of the questions because as i was saying over the last two days i've gotten a ton of dms about this so i just wanted to put a kind of catch-all video out there so 
that's it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or send me a direct message. I don't pretend to be a travel expert, but I've put a lot of time, effort, energy, and research into this. And we have lots of great resources and pages we follow to stay up to date. And so if you need more information on that or have questions past what I've already answered in this video, then just drop them below. And here's to happy traveling. And this was really the celebration of the return to travel. So if you're on the fence about booking a trip, uh, you're unsure, uh, just know that do it. You won't regret it. You'll figure it out. Do your research, ask the right people, and you can absolutely get back out there uh, and travel again. So here's to your next trip. Let's jet set together.